What's up, Brew 56? How are you doing? This is Megan. I'm Jason. We're coming live here at Real Life Church, ready to do another week of Brew 56 online. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe, uh, not too bored. I hope that you and your family are doing something special. Um, how was your spring break? Did you do anything fun? Did you do a family walk, a game night, a movie night? Did you do something interesting? I would love to know. Um, Megan. Jason. Guess what? What? I think it's time for a game. A game? A game. We always start Route 56 with a game. I love games. I love games. So, how about this? How about we bring up Miss Barry to help us? Because you know I like competition. Let's take competition at it. So Miss Barry, why don't you come on up here and let me get our candy dandy. Hi guys. Whiteboards. Alright, Megan, you get on this up. Jason this up. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Work Miss Barry has reached out to your leaders and has asked some interesting facts about them. Some and things okay, you may not know. Some things you May not know. We don't know. We don't know what these are either. So this is the first time that we are hearing them. Uh, so you at your house, grab a sheet of paper, hit that pause button to so you don't miss out. And what you're gonna do is Miss Barry is going to read one for us, and then we're gonna guess between Don, Christian, Sarah, or Leslie. One of those four is this. So we have to figure out which one. So we're gonna guess. And we're gonna keep score ourselves. You keep score at your house. All right, are you ready? All right, let's see. Do you know your leaders? Oh, that's a good title. Yeah. Don't Do be cheating. Do you know your leaders? Number one. This leader is a good roller skater. Good at roller skating. I said Mr. Don. You're right, Mr. Woo! Don is yes. a good roller skater. Alright. Good job. Good job. One to one. One to one. one, did, one, you, one. did you get it at your house? Did you get that right? Alright, All right. here we go. Let's see. Alright. This leader bought a lizard for their brother once without asking their parents permission. And said leader would not recommend doing that. Hmm. Bought a lizard for the brother. All right, here we go. I said Christian. Christian! Miss Leslie. No! Oh, no! Miss Leslie did not ask her parents. Can you believe that? All right, we missed that on that one. Still one to one. Still one to one. Still one to one. All right, here Stop. we go. All right. I forgot that Leslie would have brothers being a mom. I wasn't even thinking that. I was thinking like, <laughs> who has brothers she right has now? Brother. She does still have she a brother. She still has right a brother. Now. I know. <laughs> we just, you know, my mom was thinking like a kid would. All be. right. This leader has a birthday today. Wait, today or on Sunday? Sunday. Oh, yeah, today is Sunday. Today is Sunday. Sunday. This leader has a birthday today. All right. I go first. Sarah. I said Sarah too. Sarah Rollins. Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah. Oh, 18. 18. Oh. 18. I remember when I was 18. I'm turning 20. I barely remember that. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, this person twirled flags. In the color guard. World flags in the color guard. Let's see who you got. I'm not too confident, but I'm gonna say Don. I'm going with Leslie. <laughs> Who's Leslie? Yes! yes! <laughs> Leslie! Woo! Good job. Miss Leslie was a flag twirler. Who knew? Been on three of the seven continents. Has 
has traveled and been on three of the seven continents. How did 
did you guys do compared to me and Megan? I got, how many did we get? Five, you had like six, I had four. Yes. All right. Six to four. Cool, that's still terrible. There's three per <laughs> leader, right? All right, well, hope you did better than us. Hope you're doing well. And once you guys stand up and let's do some worship. Six, welcome, and I'm so glad you're here and tuning in. Uh, Route 56 online. All right, so let's get started with the question Have you ever thought that you knew uh, or understood something, but then you realized you actually didn't understand it at all? Uh, for example, like maybe you you listened to the rules of a game and you prepared, and you're like, Man, I know how to play this game, and then all of a sudden the game starts and you're completely lost. You don't understand it. You're, you're kind of doing the wrong thing and you're confused, right? Or maybe, for another example, maybe you are in the classroom, kind of like a math class or something. The math is, uh, this was me in math class. The teacher would explain how to solve a problem and then literally uh, I, would, I would understand it. I would know how to do it. And then I get home, brain fart, you know, is like I forget everything. Like how many of you can agree or can uh, say that you have been in a situation like that, right? Um, can any of you explain or give some examples of maybe situations you've been in there where you felt that you knew, understood everything about it, but then in reality you didn't know, it, didn't know anything? Yeah, take a moment with your family and, and ask each other, like, when it was a time you felt like this? No, go ahead. Like, I want you to talk with your family right now. I'll wait. Okay, okay. All right, so, so I'm sure that some of you have some examples, and, and those are great. So, but let me ask you this now. How did you feel in those moments? I know for me, I felt embarrassed or, or kind of dumb or, or like not as smart as I thought, especially when I came home and I was like, man, I know how to do these math problems, and then I go down. 
nothing, right? I felt embarrassed. I felt hopeless. I felt like I was dumb. And so, as you can tell for some of the examples, there will be times when we think that we understand something, but in fact, we really don't. And we may feel embarrassed. We may feel clueless. And we might wonder if we wasn't paying attention at all uh, to what was going on or was happening. And it may cause us to wonder if we would ever understand anything that's happening. And so it's easy to get frustrated. It's easy to, to kind of lose hope. But it's, and especially the things that we didn't understand end up being a big deal. Like, I mean, for real, like if you're in the middle of a game and all of a sudden, like, the rules are being explained, and then you're in the middle of the game and you're doing it wrong. That's the big deal because everybody else around you is playing it, and you don't know what you're doing. And it can be embarrassing. And so, so when that happens, what should we do? And that's actually a great question because um, many people who showed up in the Bible had to figure out what to do, especially when it came to what happened to Jesus. And so today, let's head back to the book of Luke. We've been in there for a few weeks. And as we jump into the story of today, let's quickly recap. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter. Can you believe it's already been Easter two weeks ago? Or was that last week? Was it last week? No, two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Easter, Easter the resurrection of Jesus, right? At the time, people didn't know what to make of the stories that, that they were hearing. The woman that came back from the tomb with a message that angels told her that Jesus was alive and then others thought someone had snuck into the tomb and, and stole Jesus and, and ran away, which can we just imagine for a second, just, I know my mind goes crazy sometimes, but just imagine for a second, like people actually thinking that, that someone snuck into the tomb and they pick Jesus up over their shoulder. And like, like my mind just, like when I read stuff like this, I just imagine it physically actually happening. And I don't know why, I just feel like seeing Jesus thrown over someone's shoulders being carried out of a tomb is funny. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. But anyway, so some people thought that. And, and so many wonder what was happening. And we pick up the story later in that same day that Jesus rose from the dead. And so check it out. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 14, it says this. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus. And it was about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were taking, sorry, they were talking with each other about everything that had just happened. And so now these disciples were not part of, of the main 12 disciples that Jesus and that we read about throughout the, uh, throughout the New Testament, but they were headed away from Jerusalem. And so where Jesus had doubts, so why were they moving away? And in verse 15, it says this, as they talked about those things, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. This is somewhat of a crazy moment. All right. So Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, showed up to walk with them, but they couldn't recognize him. Maybe because uh, he was wearing like one of those mat or those glasses with a little mustache and the big nose, and it's like the disguise, right? Uh, maybe no, I'm just kidding. That was that's not it at all. But so somehow God prevented them from seeing who Jesus was. Just like um, so Jesus, so God. All right, so, Jesus, so God, my goodness, God somehow kept the identity of Jesus from being able to be seen by them. And so as they were walking, Jesus asked them what they were talking about. At this moment, the conversation took a turn. And so in verse 17, it says this, Jesus asked them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stood still and their faces were sad. One of them uh, was named Cleopas. He said to Jesus, Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? These guys were shocked that this man that was walking with them, which in reality was Jesus, didn't know about Jesus dying and being crucified. 
And they were unaware of the events that had been taking place and the, the events that brought sadness to the hearts of, of followers of Jesus. And just thinking about them, Jesus played it like he didn't know what they were talking about. In verse 19, it says this, What things, Jesus said. I love Jesus because he's kind of funny. Like, he's like, what things? I don't know what you're talking about. When in reality, they're talking about himself, you know? And he says, what about, uh, Jesus asked, and they said, about Jesus of Nazareth. They replied, he was a prophet. He was a powerful in what he said and did and in, and in the sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced, sentenced to death. And they nailed him to a cross. And here it is. This is why they were so sad. Verse 21, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to set Israel free. So sure, these men were sad because they lost a leader and a teacher and possibly even a friend. But what they witnessed was terrible. But the reason they were truly sad is because they had lost, they had lost hope. You see, they believed that many Jewish people of their day believed about the Messiah. See, a lot of people in that time thought the Messiah was going to be this, this king, this, sorry, this warrior king that came and destroyed his enemies. This was the hope of many of the Jewish people of Jesus' day. They, they thought that Jesus, the Messiah, was going to come and destroy everything overturn the Roman power and, and to, to take over and kind of be like another Moses to lead them out of slavery and out for freedom. But see, this is not what the warrior king who Jesus was. This is not what Jesus did. But see, then Jesus died. And you can imagine these two guys as well as many others, warrior kings, they don't die. They live forever, right? That's what we think. And this is what they thought. The Messiah, saviors, they don't get killed. They overturn the government. They, they rule, right? Right, no. And so they must have guessed that he wasn't the one because it didn't turn out the way they expected. And they hoped. And so it's now, it's, it's back to the drawing board. And, and in verse 26, it says this, didn't the Messiah, ha-? and Jesus but Jesus stepped in to correct this misguided thinking. In verse 26, he says this, Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all of the scripture, in Moses and all of the prophets. And so the coolest part about this is that Jesus took them back through the Old Testament. He gave them example after example of how the Messiah was prophesied or, or like told stories about that. This is who the Messiah is going to be. And they, he took them back to the Old Testament and he showed them that just because the Messiah suffered, it didn't mean he wasn't the Messiah. As they kept walking, they invited Jesus for, uh, to have a meal. And as Jesus took bread... He thanked God for it and he gave them, he gave it to them. And suddenly they were able to recognize him. And in one of the most surprising moments ever of the Bible, Jesus disappeared from their sight. And reading from Luke chapter 24, verse 32, it says this They said to each other, He explained to us what the scripture meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? And the men got up immediately. And even though it was already evening, they traveled the seven miles all the way back to Jerusalem. And they celebrated with the other disciples and said, Jesus is alive. And you see, these men had called it quits. They lost hope. They, they, they was walking away from what was it. But the truth was they had thought they understood exactly who the Messiah was supposed to be. But in reality, they didn't understand who the Messiah was. So many expected this, a, a warrior king who would destroy his enemies. But Jesus did not come as a warrior. Instead, he came as something else. See, Jesus...
See, Jesus came as a servant. He came to serve. He came a servant. See, there's a big difference between a warrior and a servant. A big enough difference that many might miss the servant as even as a king. But that's not all. He didn't come as a servant king who would destroy his enemies. See, he came as a servant king who would who would die for his enemies. He came as a servant king who would die for his enemies. And we saw that two weeks ago, and we celebrated that even though he died, he still rose three days later. And so no wonder so many failed to see Jesus for who he really was. This was truly an upside down moment of what they expected. So there are certain times that we think that we understand things only to realize that we had no idea what was actually happening or what was going on. And see, this is a humbling moment, and it takes humility to realize that we don't know everything, especially about God. And at the same time, when it comes to God, we'll never know everything about God. And see, if we did, God wouldn't be this awesome, huge creator of the universe. For our entire lives, we'll be learning things about God. And so I tell you, even at the age of 31, every single day when I open up my Bible and I have my quiet time and I read Scripture, I'm always learning. It doesn't matter if, I, if I've read the story a thousand times. God can still teach me something different. And I challenge you as a family, as you read this passage, as you, as you spend time together, especially during this quarantine, like what better way to spend time as a family and, and read Scripture together, to learn together? It's an opportunity, and I challenge you to do that. But in fact, just like the people who encountered Jesus were shocked by some of the unexpected things he did, there may be times that we see God do things that are different than we expect. Or we may find his plan in our lives different than what we have planned for our lives. I know I never planned to be a youth pastor. I never planned on, on preaching or teaching or anything like that. That wasn't my plan. That was God's plan, and he laid it out for me. But we can trust him because he knows best and he is good. And we're talking about how God surprises us. And think about this question as you, as you finish this video and as you spend some time with your family today. Think about this question. What have you discovered about God that has surprised you? Maybe it was the way God took care of your family during a, during a big move, or, or maybe something happened and, and, you, and God surprised you. God will always and will continue surprising you all throughout your lives. We just have to be humble enough to be looking for it. When you get some time with your family today, share some of your surprises with each other. I think some of those stories that, that God has surprised you will, as parents, like that will encourage your kids to continue to follow Christ. And that's what we want. We want, as your students, to develop this relationship with God. We want them not to feel, think they have it all figured out. We want them to always think, man, God surprised me even this week. Man, look at look what God did. I had no idea he could do that. And as you share stories and they get excited about that, they will be more excited to learn about Christ and to grow. And so, guys, let me pray for us and we'll be, and we'll be done. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for allowing us just to, to gather together. Even though we're separated, we're still together. We're worshiping you. Uh, God, I pray for these students and their families as they, as they read the scripture together as a family that, God, you would just surprise them even in this scripture. You will surprise them with how wonderful you are and how powerful you are. And God, I pray that as we continue to, to study and to read, as we would just be, we would keep our minds humble and say, you know what? There is more for me to learn about you. God, uh, I pray that we would just continue to keep these families safe during this time. God, we love you. And we just give you the praise and honor in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Uh, we love you here at Route 56. All of our leaders are missing you. I um, can't wait to spend some time with you soon. 
Uh, you guys be safe and have a good day, all right?